a substitute. Jim Jeffries is missing several regular defenders tonight, including Dave McPherson. So 21-year-old Grant Murray is one of the defensive markers, and Neil Poynton is really pressed into service. He's missed almost all of the pre-season. Yeah, happy to see Hearts with, uh, I think, uh, five uh, former under-21 internationalists in the side. Hearts attacking the goal to the right and the white shirts, maroon shorts. They're hoping to be positive, they know that there isn't a great deal of mileage really coming here with total uh, defensive thoughts. And Neil McCann is a forward who's troubled Rangers in the past. He had a magnificent game against them in the League Cup final last season. Yeah, that's true. Losing cause. Yeah, he played brilliantly in that game, and of course there were claims from many people to have him on the national side, but he remained in the under-21 team, but he did very well. And this is the new cap uh, from last season against Wales. David Weir, excellent attitude, very fine player. And with a very responsible job tonight in the midst of the uh, back three for Jim Jeffries' formation. With McCann, Jim Hamilton, who got that hat-trick in the recent meeting between the two sides, uh, Dave McPherson's testimonial match at Tyne Castle, which Hearts did win by three Hamilton goals to two of Rangers. But uh, really, in terms of a genuine contest tonight, that was shadow boxing nine days ago. Perini jumping with Hamilton and beaten by him. Craig Moore, the Australian, just giving a bit of depth to the defending. Now McCann. Hamilton's gone to the left. Poynton, who really is very short of fitness, but much needed because, as I say, injuries to other defenders. And they're taking on the captaincy in McPherson's absence as well. Stensors, the Norwegian, Jonas Tern, who is so highly regarded around the world football scene. A tremendous player and leader for Sweden. Lundberg doing well, Ferguson taking it off. Negri has already got three goals in the two European games. The Italian from Perugia. Not so want to try and get through the first 15 minutes unscathed here. And uh, certainly one way to do that is by getting the ball into the Rangers half of the pitch and trying to feed it to McCann. Yeah, Neil McCann's very comfortable when it's played up, particularly on the left side, and he's prepared to take people on, and he's not got any inferiority complex whatsoever, so we'd expect Neil to be confident in this game against Rangers. He started very well. Here's Frey. Looking for the head of Hamilton, it was a bit behind him. Cleland's head up, put back by Salvatore. The flag has gone up. Stuart Dougal is the referee. Stuart Dougal and I think he's just moving into the top flight he's very experienced now and I would expect to see him uh, officiating it to uh, some of the top European games very soon Headed by turn Ferguson just going in and uh, leaving a foot in there and it's a free kick against him Ian Ferguson who's been here through the nine successive title seasons yeah I'm happy to say I signed Ian Ferguson uh, as a senior player when I was manager locally at Clyde and uh, he went on to do very well since then he's overcome that handicap I've been coached by me Martin <laughs> of course making his name with uh, St Mirren and that uh, winning goal in a Scottish Cup final well over 10 years ago now now time flies here's Craig Moore who's been away helping Australia in their World Cup campaign under Terry Venables and they've got a chance of reaching the finals in France next year. Turn. And the judge to be offside from Hamilton's pass after Rangers had rather given the ball away. Yeah, I'm looking at the Harps defensive setup, Martin, and normally they employ man-for-man -man marking on Loudrop when they play Rangers. They haven't done it quite so slavishly on this occasion. I see he's which is marking at the moment, but it has been Murray, so that there is no definitive instruction to one defender to mark Kane Just get the nearest man around loud as effectively as they did there. He's yeah, that, that's what they're doing. Rangers, really, the League of Nations. There's a 
side. And ambitions to now try and match Celtic by winning that European Cup. Of course, they have the match. Jonas Turner will be very interested in it against Gothenburg. And away in the next preliminary round to try and get the place in the Champions League again. Very early start to Rangers' campaign. But the two matches against the club from the Faroe Islands, Walter Smith really, although pleased with the margin of victory 11-0 on aggregate was telling me today he would have enjoyed something a bit more competitive that uh, though you might think that Rangers have an edge on hearts because they've played those two games he doesn't think so no I think not because I don't think they were severely tested in either game eh, Martin. but I'm sure Walter's happy to be in the next round against Gothenburg and good play by David we are excellent in his right side record at Ibrox hardly cause for confidence just one win here in their last 18 league visits but in each of the last three seasons they have recorded victories over Rangers and not too many clubs can boast that decision a brave one when the line's been out there with the, the crowd behind them very marginal indeed but he's in perfect position to see and the uh, hearts got the offside decision the hearts have started with good composure on it i think there's no inferiority complex at all in any of the players well i suppose in a sense craig there isn't too much pressure on them really of course they'd love to get exactly. off to a winning start here but Nonetheless, the, uh, the favouritism of Rangers in this fixture, let alone for the <laughs> title, six to one on for the title. What are they to win tonight? Clallant. Turn. Negri just trying to drift away to the far post. It's the only Rangers player in the penalty area at the moment. The only absence of uh, Paul Gascoigne, you see it's Albert who's going to take this with left foot, presumably an in-swinger, and he's got a very good strike with the ball from a dead ball situation, great with free kicks and corner kicks. And now all I need to do is say that. It's led to a chance, <laughs> not a rehearsed play by any means. No, all I need to say is good delivery and he'll duff it as he did. It was a shocking uh, corner kick, but uh, it nearly resulted in a goal. Yes, it uh, fooled Murray. Craig Moore was just a bit slow in the draw there. Well, he's got hurt actually in that incident, under the foot of Grant Murray. Just a bit too wide for Moore to turn goalwards. It is another corner. Once Moore's hobbled off for a bit of treatment. Rangers looking for their first league goal of the new campaign from Alberts' corner, which again is a little bit further out than the ones they were rehearsing this morning. Well, that's two very disappointing corners from one of the best dead ball kickers in Scotland. Colin doing well again. Here's Fulton. Who began, of course, at Celtic and played at Ibrox in uh, a couple of old firm battles in the early days of his career. Perini the Italian. Or one of the Italians, we should say. Turn. Now Lava. Which he's going to cross with him. created that chance and uh, the free kicks in a dangerous position. 
Craigmore's come back on and he's trying to get forward quickly enough. Yeah, because he's one of the targets in the dead ball situation. So French goalkeeper Gilles Rousset has become such a favourite with the Hearts fans. It's a straight header by Bjorklund and here's McCann taking him on. Required from Stensors and having got the ball he used it sensibly to switch the point of attack. Away from Negri by Murray, who's starting for Hearts for only the third time tonight. Salvatore. McCann trying to whip it infield to a supporting player who was uh, the Austrian Flergel. Salvatore is a key player. He's settled right in in front of the back three there and is mopping up everything that's played that's been attempted to play through to the Rangers strikers. Well, the crowd didn't like that. Brian Lauder didn't complain. Rangers kept the ball. To see if he left any uh, mark on the Great Dane. And here is Salvatore. Of course, there was a Hearts visit here just under a year ago that uh, made so many headlines all over the football world, really, because Hearts ended the match with seven players. Four of them red carded. Yeah, this is the hallmark of Rangers now. Patient build up from the back. Excellent footwork initially from Andy Gorham, and he's built it right up. But a careless pass there from Alberts, and Stephen Frail has possession. Salvatore. Murray. Doing well to find the forward player McCann who is surrounded by blue shirts fell on the outlet again here's Fulton the Hearts have got a lot of players forward here and uh, Fulton was hoping to perhaps produce a better final ball then Hearts very disappointed to miss out on the European qualifying themselves. The crowd enjoying some footwork again from Gorham. Hearts finished fourth last season. Yeah, Andy Gorham's very comfortable with the ball on his feet, both sides, particularly the right side, but he's uh, an all round sportsman and a good outfield player as well. When it comes to return of. It only takes one slip, and yeah. the egg is well and truly on the face. Yeah, I think the goalkeeping coach Alan Godchenson may have something to say to Andy at half time. Alberts. Now to her. Just asking a bit too much of Negri. Craig, can I put you on the spot and ask you about Alec Cleland? You haven't picked him for the Scotland senior side. No, I would say that uh, he's very much in contention. I've picked him many times for the under-21 side when he was at Dundee United. And since he's come to Rangers, he's been one of the most consistent Scottish players here. But we've been well covered in that position. Uh, but the way Alec's playing just now and the way he played last season, I can hardly ignore him very much longer. And it's not my intention to ignore him because he's a smashing guy with a good attitude. Negri. Well, that will certainly be music to Cleland's ears. I know you've got Jackie McNamara, Craig Burley. That's right. Playing we, that we, sort we had Stuart McKimmy before who was mm. really settled in the position. And David Weir also here, the free defender, plays right back very well when required for Hearts. 
phenomenal footwork from Gorham. Not so convincing. No unusual. Very seldom do you see Andy Gorham make a mistake uh, with the back pass. And that's caught on his right foot, which, if you understand me, was the wrong foot. McCann. And whether he was hoping Hamilton to uh, make a run across the face there, I think didn't so. come. He was looking for the near post run from uh, Hamilton without doubt. And of course it was closer to his right foot, which is not his favoured foot. Solidly won by Weir. Met in similar vein by Perini. McCann trying to get the drop on Bjerkland, who was being fouled with Stuart Dougal. He would have given the free kick if required, I'm sure he would have done. Turn. Now, trying to link up with Negri. If there is a criticism of Rangers, perhaps, to this point, is that they've been reasonably circumspect in the number of players that they've pushed on to support Negri. Yeah, the sport's not coming quick enough from midfield. Hearts have only got three involved here. McCann and Hamilton with one in the middle. It goes off Neil McCann for a goal kick. Jim Jeffries there looking quite anxious, but uh, he'll be making himself heard, I can assure you. Both during the game and at half-time, he's a colleague, Billy Brown, beside him. The general impression there was that Hearts could have made more of that situation. Feeling. I think that's the manager's feeling, Martin. Ferguson. Trying to ease it on quickly as he was closed down by Salvatore. Negri, but wanted to uh, play it back, and as he did so, there was no one really prepared to make a run into any sort of space that he might have created nearby. Stensorce. Flergel. Ferguson. Moore can go further forward if he re wishes. He passes the responsibility to Ferguson. It's a decent run from Negri. a great pass from Ian Ferguson and good play by Negri. Ferguson in turn and now Alberts. He can hit them. And that might have required a save from Rousset but Murray put out a foot and turned it away. Not quite hit with a full hammer but not bad for starters. Well I think it was on the goal target there and a good uh, deflection by Murray. by Moore, Rousseau got a fist to it, up in the air from Weir, Moore challenging again, that was Negri with the attempted acrobatics, Stensorce, scraped away by Weir in the end, a little bit more sustained the pressure from Rangers at the moment, Mill nil at Ibrox, not yet 20 minutes gone. A sore one, I think. One or two angry reactions, but the referee's reaction was to call for the physio straight away. Poynton going in and getting the ball, and Craig Moore just was the second to arrive. Yeah, I don't think there's any malice there, but it was a hefty clash, and both players suffered a little. Jim Jeffries taking the opportunity. He's having a word with Flogel. Talk to Flogel, but the fourth official. I wonder if Flogel. not too happy about that. I 
I don't think Vogel will need to know English to know what Jim Jeffries is saying to him. Just getting foreign players, Craig, that uh, impress you about Rangers, but the type of players that they've got, like Jonas Turn. Yeah, the footballers, uh, every player can play, and that's very encouraging. Turn, of course, is one of the best players in Europe, without question. And as I say it, he misjudges the throw in. <laughs> Hamilton bravely heading on to Fulton. Anderson trying to get back at him. Fulton with too many options for putting it too far ahead of McCann. <laughs> and the crowd really lifted by the championship flag being unfurled, but they haven't had the early goal they would have been dreaming of as they came to the ground. Here's Cullen in a decent position for the cross, and Albert's trying to reach it. It's a good touch by Frail, an important one. Yeah, Stephen Frail did exceptionally well at the back post there. Com competing for it and, and locking his header and keeping it in play was very good defending. There he is. I think he tried to hit it for a corner kick, but it stayed in and Hearts escaped and of the throw in. Stephen Phil in possession. Birklet. Here's Clellant. Oh. Two clubs did meet in the reserve fixture on Saturday, which was useful to both managers. Walter Smith saw Andy Gorham get a game. And immediately brought him back into the senior side tonight. And Neil Poynton played his first match football of the pre-season. Which has helped him participate. The Hearts have a player down. And Stuart Dougal. And John Hamilton's the, to, uh, the player who's down. Referee stopping the play, and Hamilton clutching his left wrist. He uh, landed heavily on it, I think. <laughs> Hamilton has done very well recently in under-21 international matches. He's scored several very important goals for Tommy Craig's team. And, of course, his father used to be a professional player with Aberdeen. Jim Jeffries with the backroom boys, Billy Brown and Paul Hegarty there. There's Paul Hegarty, I know, has been helping the uh, young defenders at the club and Absolutely. has certainly got the experience to see that. Yep. But Jim Jeffries clearly feeling that his team can do more and yep. that they're certainly doing well enough with half of the first half gone and still holding Rangers at no goals. Hearts pop south of the border for an important part of their pre-season. Three games in England and a good week spent uh, in the Durham area using the facilities of Newcastle United. determination in the Rangers ranks to play from the back and Andy Gorham kicks a magnificent ball, a long ball, but he's not done that and that's uh, indicative of a determination to build and they're doing that patiently at the moment. The one thing I have noticed that uh, not one of the three central defenders has broke, really broken forward. So there's a rigidity of it's just... Here's Lavrip accelerating and Weir did very well because Negri was waiting in the centre for the ball to be steered across to him. 
Yeah, brilliant turn, a change of pace by Brian Lowdrop. And the ball was earmarked for Negri, but it was well cut out. So Rangers have a corner. 20 minutes to go to half-time. Rousse comes through the crowd, gets a solid connection. Which the same can't be said for Flergel. Although well, he does very well the second time to dispossess Laudrup. Albets. Break more further forward this time. Perini, who played in the European Cup final, as it used to be called, the final of the Champions League, we should officially call it now, for Juventus when they lost to Borussia Dortmund only last May. And he's coming across to try and close down Hamilton. He helps the ball into the path of turn. So much animation from the Hearts dugout. Yeah, they're annoyed with Jim Hamilton for trying a difficult pass when the easy one was on and would have been effective. So he's been left in no doubt of the feelings of Jim Jeffries. Well, Fulton's only got the one pass on. It was a question of when he was going to play it. It was marginally too late. <laughs> McCann was uh, holding and holding, and then when he went... Rangers had seen him going and step forward. Negri. And Murray had to play that. Loudrup was too close for comfort. I don't think the goalkeeper would have got it. Negri, yeah. who played for Perugia in Serie A last season, got 15 goals. It was his first season at the highest level in Italy, but he'd been scoring consistently in the second division prior to that. here for Frail and time for Rangers to send Moore forward and Perini forward yeah Craig Moore's off on the target he's come up only for set pieces but he's at the back post for this one Perini getting close to it but uh, when it's that height you'd expect Russo to swallow it as he did I think looking at it, Martin, with half an hour almost uh, played, neither goalkeeper has had really one save to make. A couple of crosses from Rousse and some passbacks for Andy Gorham. And everything's been very tentative in the front area. Well, that tells you maybe a little bit about the learning process for Rangers to get used to playing as a unit. Dougal this time. He had a, a lecture to Neil Poynton once. Produces the card this time. Yeah, there's no doubt Neil was late there. So the first caution of the match. And it goes to Poynton. support for him so this time when he got it with Murray at his back he went his own way yeah and I was bemoaning the lack of uh, shots on target and immediately Negri has proved me wrong and his shot was just wide of target but it was an excellent effort and he created the space for himself and <laughs> he a shot of uh, possession in these sorts of areas for Rangers. Now, but up to the error then. Hamilton. 
Arteta. The Flergel trying to force himself across the line of the challenge from Ferguson, which he did cleverly enough to get the free kick. <laughs> Steve Fulton to take it. Looking for Hamilton and then here's Salvatore. David Weir on his way back, he was a regular goal-getter from set plays for Hearts last season. Lauder was no flag, so Murray's challenge there was vital. Lauder otherwise would have been away. The back heel from Lauder comes off because Alberts was thinking and anticipating. Turn, feeding it into Negri again. Fulton winning the header and prepared to chase on himself. Hearts sticking to their task, knowing that nothing less than 100% will be good enough tonight. Turn. Certainly Jim Jeffries' team with plenty of players behind the ball at the moment. Ladriff, who of course, has the ability to unhinge the mass defences. Jonas Turn. Wanting to pass it rather than shoot and give it back to Laudra. Well, the flag was up against the Rangers skipper. Yeah, I thought that Tern had a chance of a shot himself mm. there, but presumably because it was on his left side, he decided to play it into Brian. But it was certainly within shooting distance and he had the opportunity. Walter Smith, as we told you earlier, denied the services of Paul Gascoigne because of suspension, and also Ali McCoist, who tweaked uh, groin muscle in training this morning. I think Walter can't, so. he can't be too displeased, Martin, because uh, if there's anything worrying him, he's down at the side of the, the pitch there with Archie Knox and the new coach, Tommy Muller Nielsen. So the fact that Walter has remained in his seat in the director's box for this length of time indicates that he's not too displeased at the moment with what's happening. We've had one Italian bringing down another, or being a judge to have done that, and Salvatore becomes a, a second hearts player to be cautioned. Uh, he clearly felt that Negri made a meal of that. Well, that could inhibit Salvatore because he's been tackling very well. got the ball forward then and the challenge from Laudrup who gets a bit of a lecture but uh, hardly one of the grand game's hitmen is he Brian Laudrup no it's unusual for Brian to be tackling Frail has done very well to get back to this level of the game after cruciate ligament problems in the past Perini looking at past McCann who is losing his concentration appealing the handball against the Italian well read by Weir and another foul by Lauderdale <laughs> just one or two signs of frustration amongst the Rangers fans who perhaps aren't the most patient in the world so used to success good tackle by Bjorklund Fulton now pointed. Of course, had a good career in England, winning a championship medal with Everton in 1987. Yeah, and he's been a very steady player here for Hearts. Great influence and a sound, outstanding fullback since his arrival from England. Helped on by Negri. Met, though, by Murray. side really finding consistent rhythm in their passing but that's really because so much work is going into the efforts to win the ball back against the team that is in possession it's Rangers now and Frail will join the list of dishonour and referee Dougal's notebook
Yeah, you're right about Stephen Farrell, Martin, because he was uh, approach, he had been in the under-21 squad and was uh, approaching full international honours when he sustained a serious cruciate ligament injury, which kept him out for I think about a year. And he's done very well to fight him, fight his way back into the heart side. He didn't do so well with the challenge, but Rangers haven't done well with the free kick. but Rangers, as you'd expect, with a, an attacking edge, but not with a goal to show for it, or indeed too much to trouble Gilles Rousset from the Hearts' goal. Stensorz. did so well for Rosenberg in the European scene. And everywhere you go in British football these days, you seem to find a Norwegian. Good uh, tussling, defending from the front with McCann. <laughs> the referee seeing that uh, from his angle, turn played the ball. Hearts weren't too happy about not getting a free kick. Then here's more for Rangers and Ian Ferguson. One or two good moments in this first half involving Alec Cleland. Stensors, Laudrup again. Ferguson missing his kick. And uh, if that was a shot from Fallon, which I suspect it was, it was a long way off the mark. Yeah, it was. It was bouncing awkwardly for Alec Fallon there, and he was taking it in the volley with his left foot, which it was a difficult one. And I don't think it was all that far off, uh, Martin. Well, it was indeed. <laughs> yeah, he sliced it with his left foot. But would you feel, if you were Walter Smith, there might be one or two more Rangers players in the box in a situation like that? I think so, yeah. They seem to give a very reluctant to support the front two. Uh, you would have thought that Ian Ferguson and uh, Alberts in particular would have been there in close support much earlier. Well, that's a bit tentative, trying to win the ball from Fraley. He failed to do that. <laughs> McCann, who hasn't got too much weight to throw about. It was a bit wild then. So got to be careful. They don't want a repeat of what happened here last September. Well, great attitude by Tern, who was badly fouled, but got up and on with the play without any complaint. as Rangers have come. Yeah, Paul Richie was struggling a little, but he stopped his task, and I think his presence and uh, leaning on uh, Brian Lourdes perhaps ensured that Brian didn't hit the target and just got the outside of the post for that one. Well, but Rousset got a touch, and then got the post. Touch. Ah, good, good goalkeeping. Alberts with the corner. He wants to get it onto his left foot as you can really work out for yourselves. Oh, and Rousset has gone in from Negri, has it? Goal for Rangers. First goal of the season. A messy one, but that doesn't matter. Rousset made a hash of the save, but Negri forced it over the line in the mind of the assistant on the far side, Wilson Irvin, who straight away ran back to the halfway line to say, goal for Rangers. Yeah, good ball in from the, the left side, from the left foot of Stensis, and uh, although it was a bit of a scramble, I think uh, Negri deserves a lot of credit for being there and for forcing it in. But unlucky for Hearts. protesting
Yeah, he's uh, feeling, he's complaining about the fact that the, he's, the ball wasn't over the line, but uh, it looked as though it was over the line. Difficult to see from here, but uh, Lucy is not happy. Great joy in the Rangers bench, I can assure you. Walter Smith, Tommy, Mother Nielsen almost in the pitch. A bit of relief as well, I would imagine. Well, that was what Lucy was protesting about. Here's Negri again. That's a great check. Well, that was certainly over the line. Yeah, wonderful goal. Marco Negri, in a matter of moments here, has really announced himself to the Rangers fans. He's got European goals already for his new club, but here he is on his Scottish league debut, and that was simply superb. Yeah, a magnificent goal, Martin. Ney. Um, a pity Paul Ritchie got into a bit of a fankel, I think, with Neil Poynton. But Negri seized on the chance, and that, that finish is outstanding. To chip the goalkeeper comprehensively from that distance is a wonderful finish. credit to him because Gilles Roussey provides a big target to get past and uh, he did it with great precision. Well, we've had to wait a while for Rangers to get going here, but they have now really got going and here's the man who sparked it all. Ferguson. Now Loudrup. Rangers suddenly on a roll. Been a rather patient approach from them. And of course, the league chase, even when you've won it nine times in a row, is a marathon, not a sprint. Exactly, but they've been building patiently all the time. They've not lost their composure. And as a result, they've managed to score two goals. And Hearts and Jim Jeffries will be furious because what the best part of 40 minutes Good on his toil, That's keeping cool. Rangers at bay, and suddenly, all well, the roofs come crashing in here. Two goals in very quick succession. Turn. Jonas turn again. Chance for another one for Rangers here. Another great run by Turn. His movement off the ball is absolutely superb. Sky Sports on uh, Sunday from the Nationwide League. Sheffield United against Sunderland. We start at 12 on Sky Sports 3. And later that afternoon on Sky Sports 1, Tottenham against Manchester United. The FA Carling Premiership's first weekend, of course. But the league action well underway in Scotland. And the champions with the target of 10 titles in a row have uh, already made an imprint on the new season. Marco Negri, well, Rangers are sure they got 125 goals in all competitions last season, and there's a lot more to come from them, but they'll be hard pushed to find one as ornately and as exquisitely done as Marco Negri's second here. Yeah, that was a wonderful goal. I think his first very fortunate, and, uh, you know, I, I have a little sympathy with uh, Gilles Rousset because he was appealing that the ball wasn't over the line. Difficult to see whether it was over the line, and I think Hearts are very unfortunate. Well, on such incidents, games turn. But really, I have to say that Rousset might have uh, done better with the original header. Exactly, yes. He, he didn't pump it to safety, he put it against the post, I think. Uh, that gave the opportunity to uh, Marco Negri. Game 
to Rangers in Europe, two in his second, two tonight. See the difference when you have two goals ahead. Craig Moore starts to break comfortably from the back three position to receive a pass forward from Alec Thurland there. Where? Now Albert's got Lurgle made out of play. their half-time cup of tea. You'd think they'd be really shouting Rangers to the break with those two goals in a 70-second spell. It's really split parts asunder here. Yeah, you're always vulnerable after a goal is scored because concentration tends to change and uh, unfortunately for Harps, they possibly lost a bit of concentration at that point. And were unlucky. I think Poynton and Ritchie were unlucky because they got Frank at the ball that uh, caught between the two of them. More. Now Lardrup. The ever willing Cleland. Ferguson. Half time whistle. Well, Marco Negri. The applause for him in particular at halftime. Two goals. Carini's header fumbled by Russe against the post. Two very differing goals. The first contentious. Negri against the post, really off his thigh and then the edge of his boot. And the ball ruled over the line. Russe was really aggrieved and believed it hadn't. But then no disputing the second goal of the highest class. A tall goalkeeper left totally helpless. Perfection in the trajectory, in off the underside of the bar. Marco Negri's night so far at Ibrox. He's the difference between the two teams, but I'm sure Hearts will have plenty to say about that first goal. They're two down at the break. We kick off our first weekend of league football in England Sunday. Sheffield United against Sunderland. Exclusively live from Bramall Lane, Sunday at 12 noon, Sky Sports 3. Tonight we're at Ibrox, Rangers opening in Scotland at home to Hearts. Match facts from this first half, Rangers in front by two goals to nil, and they've comprehensively outshot Hearts. Hearts haven't mustered anything like a strike on goal so far, and uh, Rangers have won five corners without reply. It's been quite hard fought, of most concern here, perhaps, to the Hearts boss, Jim Jeffries. Four bookings in the first half. Point and Salvatore, Frail and Rousset. Just about a year ago, Hearts had four men sent off in this ground. Actionaries in the first half, dominated by Rangers, and they've also vastly dominated possession, 63% of the ball. Charlie Nicholas is with me. Was it? The first goal? I have my serious doubts about that. I think by the final angle that showed that goal, I think, shows for me it wasn't the whole ball over the line. But in saying that, I mean, Rangers have dominated this game without much production. It's a fumble from Russe, 
Negri just tries to steer it in. I'm not convinced that whole ball is over the line. I think Rusi... I mean, I find it difficult to how you can get a linesman to judge this. When the keeper, as you see Rusi getting up now, he must be blocking the linesman's view for me. Because the linesman's on the far he's side. He's on the far side, at his back. As you can see, Rusi getting up now, I, I find it difficult for the linesman of assistant referee now to actually have that right angle. And for me, the, the whole ball is not over the line, and I think Jim Jeffrey's side are right to be aggrieved at that. Is the SFA going to pick this up and start this whole debate about video replays, etc. again? Well, I, I, I think it's difficult when it comes to a goal. There's no doubt about that. I, for me, that's not a convincing goal. And I, I don't think you can ever come back and say, bum, that, that shouldn't be a goal. Not unless you have the, the cricket lights or whatever, but uh, in saying that, you know, you've got to go with the referee's decision. And the referee was guided by the lines. He had, lines he couldn't see it, assistant. he had no right to call it, and the linesman did call it. Now, he's made the decision, but it was a tough one for him, I'll give him that. It was a very difficult and marginal one. Listen, anybody who hasn't seen it will only know that Marco Negri has scored again. Oh, he's but just to remove any doubt that he is a quality finisher, this happened just two minutes later. Well, You'd have been proud of this one. Yes, but it's a mix-up between two Hearts defenders. But if you're paying and you're buying quality, there's nothing, nothing that tells you otherwise than this is pure class. This guy goes and goal, he's one-on-one. -on -one. Most people would go across the keeper's body. He's got the craft, the technique, and it clips the underside of the bar. That's how precise that is, and that is sensational. And he's a tall keeper, Russo, isn't he? He's about six foot five, yeah. and it's difficult to chip someone like that. There were one or two signs from Negri earlier in the piece, Charlie. Yeah. Overall, what do you make of his game, what you've seen here? I think he looks a tidy player. He, he, he takes responsibility. Individual ability, doesn't get enough bend on it. Would probably want to hit the target. You see him, but he's up alone a lot. And I think with Loudrop's ability, you need some more players supporting him. But this is good skill, and I think that set him off. And once he got the first goal, you know, and now we can see the class coming. Charlie, the roof has caved in on Hearts in the last 10 minutes before half time. How do they come back here? Well, it's difficult. I mean, no shots, no corners, no anything in target. So I think it always seemed a matter of time before, you know, Rangers were going to get someone. Unfortunate for Hearts the way it came about, but in saying that, they went to pieces in the last 10 minutes of that first half. But they, they went under amazing pressure in the first half with, you know, very unproductive time for Rangers in the first 40 minutes or so. Thank you, Charlie. Jim Jeffries has got a hard job of work on in the Hearts dressing room right now because Rangers are on course to start their league campaign with a win here at home. Two to the good at half time then. What can Hearts produce in the second half to stop Rangers setting off successfully? in pursuit of ten in a row. Almost ready to go here at iBox once more. Just a reminder about Fishermania coming this weekend on Sky Sports 3, Saturday at 12 noon. It's a feast for anglers, five hours of live action. At iBox, Rangers against Hearts, all set to go in the second half. A couple of differing examples of the finisher's art in this first half. It goes into the record books as a goal scored by Marco Negri, his first in Scottish League football. Was it over the line? The referee's decision, with the help of the referee's assistant, was that it was. Hearts a goal behind, and very shortly after that, two behind. Have a look at this. That's top drummer. Eric Cantona and others. Was that just as good? Every bit is good. I really have to say, it was sky high with confidence, but it was a tremendous finish. Overall, on the basis of what you've seen here tonight, Charlie, your impressions on the new faces for Rangers? Uh, I've been very impressed by Perini and Stensas in particular. Uh, I think it was difficult to replace Robertson, but he looks impressive, as does Loudrop and Tern. But those two in particular, Negri's look good, but I think it's lack of numbers getting in the box. Alberts and Ferguson at times have been giving the ball away cheaply. Whereas the top players, Tern, Loudrop, they give it away very rarely. So, been impressed so far, but not over impressed. Still rusty. Thank you, Charlie. It looks as though hearts were sent out early by Jim Jeffries to start getting back to work. Let's rejoin Craig Brown and Martin Tyler. Well, we've got news of a hearts substitute for you, Colin Cameron, who one of a number of hearts players not fully fit at the start of the season, but well enough to be sent on to try and help turn things around here at Ibrox in the second half in place of the Austrian Thomas Flergel, who I must say found it very hard to get into the first 45 minutes. A 45 minutes in which perhaps the major talking point was that first goal and I think the 
It's not to say that the ball, Craig Brown, wasn't over the line, but with all the technology at our disposal, we couldn't prove that it was over the line. No, that's right, and that's uh, quite disconcerting to those who think that we should use technology. I think we've got to accept the referee's decision there, but uh, it was a very, very debatable uh, decision that he made. Uh, the linesman assisted him and he was convinced it was a goal, but uh, as you say, we've looked at it several times and it's uh, inconclusive at the moment. And uh, how often is the case that these debatable goals are crucial goals? Had it been maybe the third in a 4 0 win, well, it can be uh, easily forgotten, but the whole match really turning on it, hearts <laughs> resisting stoutly. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, Martin, that uh, there's a great chance that there would have been no second goal had uh, the first one not gone in. You know, it's a psychological boost and hearts are a downer and they lose a quick uh, second one. But interesting to see young Colin Cameron come in because he's been in the fringe of the international team as well. He's got a B international uh, cap already and he's a talented and gifted uh, attacking midfield player. Great user of the ball. Well, Negri on a hat-trick, Ferguson trying to provide the first chance for him to acquire that. Two up for Hearts, Hamilton and McCann as it was in the first half. Gloomy, Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown. Yeah, these two are not often gloomy, but they're a bit pensive at the moment. Lava, time to bring it down. Ferguson. Turn, steering it into the feet of Alberts, who rather lost his way. His way, lost the ball to Alberts. It's a corner. We have a bit of carelessness there from uh, Colin Cameron. Negri going near post, but the ball not reaching him. Craig Moore is up. All yeah. the corners you'd expect. Over Ferguson, behind Moore, collected by Cleland. Loudrup, good movement from Cleland to make the pass possible. Loudrup this time hoisting it in. Loudrup takes on Hearts again with the help of Negri. Turn. Uh, it wasn't the most precise ball that he played, but that would make plenty of it. Cleland. Turn. Well, he just hooked it wide. Good play down the right. That was an excellent ball, held up by the lush grass, but uh, a magnificent pass from Loud up to Cleland, an equally good one to on his turn and he shot just past the near post. At times it looks uh, as though Turner will only shoot if it's the, the last option really, that he prefers to steer other players into scoring positions than get goals himself. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I've seen him score for Sweden and uh, I'm sure he'll score quite a number from midfield for Rangers as well. There's a certain relevance to Scotland's World Cup group with a, a couple of the Swedes involved tonight, and uh, at least the Austrians gone off. Yeah, well, <laughs> the Swedes are first-class players, and the Swedish team is an outstanding side, captained by Tern, and Botland has got over 50 international honours. There he is, Jockey Botland, a very, very solid defender, along with Patrick Anderson for Sweden. Board. Of course, Sweden against Austria, a key fixture as far as Scotland's fate is concerned. Yeah, we're looking for a draw there, obviously, uh, Martin. Very 
he certainly had more touches on the ball than most here in his turn. Yeah, you see the positions he was getting into there. He was wide at the left corner flag, and he makes magnificently timed runs off the ball to receive it in the position. So we'll need to watch that when we play Sweden. And I think our only hope of playing them is if we both manage to qualify, and hopefully they'll have to do it in, in second spot. His favourite foot, the right one. On the left side, he's very dangerous. Well, you do feel that the stage is set here for Rangers with uh, multi football cultural talents assembled by Walter Smith OBE. We should uh, add our congratulations for his uh, honour in the summer. Absolutely, yeah, no one deserves it more. Parlance. That used to mean out before Easter, but I don't <laughs> think it uh, does in uh, Walter's case. Well, I'm certain it won't be. Hearts, of course, not blessed with the same financial resources. Spent a penny on transfer fees for new players. Both Adam and Flergel came as free agents, and I'm sure uh, wage pack Packets are uh, on the uh, heftier side at Hearts level. No, Hearts are also in the process of uh, building a new stadium, uh, along with many other clubs, and quite clearly that handicaps their spending ability on players. But Jim Jeffries is very good at negotiating the transfer market and does pick up a lot of great, great bargains. And there's one on David Weir, who we signed from his, old, his previous club, Falkirk. Neil McCann, another one here. If there is hope for Hearts in this game, it might come from McCann, who has uh, teased Rangers in the past. They've got a free kick and by Salvatore. Frail looking to take it quickly and then realising the sense of just waiting for one or two to get forward. Like Paul Ritchie, like David, David Weir. Hamilton got to it, and it was really attacked by McCann, the second ball back across the face of the goal. Yeah, Weir and Ritchie were the decoys to the front post, and the long ball proved successful to Jim Hamilton, and uh, Neil McCann did well, but just nodded it past. Good ball across from Hamilton. Just a little warning to Rangers in case there's any risk of complacency here with the two-goal lead in the bag. Under hit by Clark, come out by point. Cameron, who's got an eye for goal from midfield, trying to catch up the play there to Poynton's pass. Dogged by... Bjorklund, who is uh, an out-and-out -out defender and a very good one. <laughs> well, the referee having to step in, perhaps more because of Negri's reaction. He didn't like that, Marco Negri. David Weir coming in from behind. Another booking. Hearts players now have yellow cards. We're one of the infamous four of those red cards here in September last year. Poynton, who's on the pitch, was another, and Ritchie. And uh, Pasquale Bruno made up the quarrelsome quartet. Yeah, that was quite a game. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a repeat. Uh, you know, I certainly hope not. But, uh, you know, the bookings have been justified, but they haven't been very, very malicious. Tackles. Alberts. Hamilton able to pass on to a bit of miss 
misplaced play by Rangers. And Hart's not finding it easy to get forward in any consistent sense. have got some potential substitutes warming up. Craig, our viewers in England might wonder why only three substitutes are named in Scotland's Premier Division, unlike the five in many other top countries now. Well, I don't know. In fact, it's uh, less than we have in international matches. We have seven in international matches and five in under-21 international matches, so there's an inconsistency in the substitute to uh, rule throughout Europe. Uh, I think, obviously, managers are quite happy to have three only because you've got five there, you've another couple of bonuses more, and uh, the club chairman will be saying, my goodness, you know, how many are we going to have on this bench? But uh, it certainly uh, keeps the players happier if they're at least stripping. And I would uh, be all for as many substitutes as possible. The one consistency, of course, is only three uh, allowed off. Three out of three here, three out of five exactly. in England, three out of seven in international. So. Exactly. And it's significant that uh, neither side here has elected to use a goalkeeper. Some do, but uh, we haven't. And even with the injury worry uh, over Andy Gorham, Rangers haven't had a substitute goalkeeper on it. a great pass for Albert. Negri going to the left, clearing a pass for Albert, but he's dragged it off target. And that's unusual, Walter down, he's two up, he's down there, something not pleasing him. I don't think Albert shot would be giving great satisfaction to Walter there, because he's usually much more clinical in his finish. Richie unable to pick out Hamilton, so it breaks down for Hearts again. Alberts. Rather about whom there was so much speculation that he uh, wouldn't be in Rangers colours this season, but here he is. Richie did uh, enough there. It's quite a clever play from the Hearts defender. Just enough to put Laudrup off. Probably technically a foul, but <laughs> not a clear-cut one. Poynton with confidence in those around him. And despite his lack of match fitness, still prepared to go off on a run, at least test out Cleland, who was equal to the test. Fulton. Glanced on by Hamilton, who took his goals very well in the Craig uh, McPherson testimonial match at this. Altogether a different kettle of fish. Stensors. Well, it's no surprise, but he's so impressive, Jonas Turn, in everything that he does. Absolutely, he's nominated this game. Everything. I don't think he's made one mistake in the match. Maybe he miss hit a left-footed shot, but other than that, he's been majestic. Alves had a look towards Clellan, then decided to take the more central route. And then Ian Ferguson is penalised. Just catching Cameron. to pick things up further forward. There's Gordon Jury and Eric Bo Anderson amongst the substitutes with the teenager from Italy. There's Jury, who's not a teenager these days. No, but I'm a bit selfish. I'd like to see Jury getting <laughs> a game because uh, he appeared in our last World Cup match in Belarus as a substitute, did well. And that was after missing a lot of last season with, uh, what was it, a knee injury, I think. Okay. Yep. He played uh, in the game, uh, I'm saying as a substitute, but he played and he played in several positions for us because we were 
and to make tactical changes and Gordon Jury proved his versatility in that game. Guilty of playing a bit of football, perhaps too close to their own goal. It's led to a free kick. And maybe a chance for Hearts to get some sort of foothold back into the game. Fulton. And a save, at least. Good header from Gorham David. from Weir's header. Yeah, good header from David Weir, but it was comfortable for Andy Gorham. <laughs> Negri, who got the two goals that we've seen tonight in very quick succession just before half time. Six of one and half a dozen of the other, and free kicks been given against McCann. Both players trying to get their arms across. In fact, McCann was maybe the more determined, the lighter man of the two, but he's the one who's been penalised. Carini. They just can take this at their own tempo now. Stensors at the far post. Turn as ever lurking dangerously on the edge of the area. Lovely ball for Stensors. Across Russo, but beyond the far post as well. Again, it was uh, this man, Cairn, that was the creator of that chance. Makes the pass. Typical of his work tonight. Yeah, terrific. The uh, always curving well away from the goal from Stensors' shot. Now well, that tells you how much Rangers are in control at the moment. And here's Fulton. Stensors back defending. The more hearts chase it, of course, the more open the game will come. Exactly. He's given it away. Pointer. Hamilton hoping that uh, that would run through to McCann. It didn't. Loudra, where he can be so damaging to the opposition, they wonder what he's going to do. He opted to steer it towards Negri then, and the pass didn't come off. Brian Laudrup, whose fitness for tonight was a matter of a certain amount of doubt, not a serious injury or back strain in the first European game in the Faroe Islands. Maybe he's just keeping a little bit in reserve in these circumstances. Yeah, it looks like it, uh, Martin. He's uh, made some very telling runs, but it uh, hasn't been quite as incisive as... He was most of last season, and you're right, probably just regaining full match fitness for a very important uh, European game against Gothenburg. But this man has been superb. Mm. Here is Laudrup. Dropping it over Frail, no, who did very well to plot the path of that. But who does it go to? As if magnetised, Jonas Turn. Stensor opting for a booming cross, but once more, Marco Negri alone in the penalty area. Ferguson, Laudrup. Negri! Gets the bar! That close to the hat trick. Well, a magnificent run from Negri in the great shot against the bar, but a wonderful pass too from Brian Laudrup. Well, that was excellent play from the striker.
The outcome is a corner when it was so, yeah. so close to being 3-0. Yeah, he did his run across the first defender brilliantly. Well, some forwards, Craig, and I can think of Gary Lineker as one of them, like to be the only player in that sort of area. They don't want their teammates cluttering it up. Exactly, and uh, he did what all good strikers do, got across the face of the first defender, the, the man defending the, the cross, and he was first to the ball. And only Hearts were saved by the crossbar there. Well, that would have been an impressive hat-trick in the opening day of the season. Yes, and you'd have to decide the man of the match between him and Jonas Turn, and I don't yeah, envy exactly. you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might have clinched it, but I'm, I'm going for Turn uh, at the moment. He's creating. And Hearts are struggling. Do you feel for them? Yeah, they I think... Ha haven't come here with their strongest lineup. No, one or two injuries, particularly David McPherson back to Ibrox uh, for David would have been a chance for him to enjoy the game against Rangers and play well, uh, given Hearts further options, particularly at set pieces. Fulton. But Hearts will feel at least they're still within range. If they could just get one goal back, it would be interesting to see what Rangers' response would be. But it looks even that a tall order at the moment. supply but uh, as he added maturity in Craig Moore's play well, we could see what was in Turn's mind I'm not sure what louder it was trying it was a back heel where there was no uh, blue shirt at all Ferguson with characteristic aggression yeah, that's what I was saying, uh, Martin. Brian Lodrop hasn't been quite as incisive. He's done very well, obviously. You would, anyone would be delighted to have him on his side, but uh, the final pass there was typical of one or two things he's done, which I'm not... But isn't that the essence of the buying policy for Walter Smith? A great dependency on Lodrop and Gascoigne last season. Now, if Lodrop's a bit off the boil or a bit short of match fitness, and you've got Turn, you've got Negri... <laughs> exactly. Oh, there's so many options here, but I wouldn't say he was off the boil, but I would say that... Uh, I've seen him better. That's all. He's still had a fine game. It's a quarter of the match to go. Another goal, of course, for Rangers. I'm just doing my mathematics here. Would they be ahead of Motherwell? Yeah, they would be. Goal difference if they win by a three margin. Yeah. If they win by three, they go to top of the league on the first day of the season. And would they be still there on the last day of the season? Well, I'm sure there's 45, 48,000 fans here would hope that's the case, and many more throughout the country. Well, a third goal tonight would make absolutely sure of the three points. That's the most important thing for Rangers, because Hearts are looking to fashion something on the break here with Cameron. And McCann. Fulton trying to catch up his teammates but McCann caught in possession pointed but he has to play it back because it's so hard for Hearts to get out in numbers and all Richie can do is play it into space but it was easy for Moore to tidy up Andy Gurham Probably pleased to get a touch with the kick. Had that first goal not been given. Oh, Rusay in trouble. 
ball didn't come into the area, but he was able to make up for his misjudgment and stop Negri striking again. Gilles Rousset there, he hesitated, he didn't know whether the ball was coming quickly enough into the box for him to handle it, so he headed it outside the box and lost possession, but a fine saving dive eventually. It's so complicated for goalkeepers now. <laughs> and oh, very much he's so. lost his bearings, and of course the price for misjudgment is uh, so heavy, handle it outside, you're off. So you could the senses. Yeah, I think he was impatient waiting to come into the ball. Here's a good pass, though. And it was Perini who was up there to provide the cross, and he'll nick the ball back here from Pointed. Perini! Corner. Yeah, his failure to get back after the, his first poor cross enabled him to receive that uh, pass. A poor back pass from Salvatore, but uh, a fine shot from Perini, who's also had a superb game. I think he's been faultless throughout the match. Here's Cameron. Very little on ahead of him there, Colin Cameron, so he was resorting to a back pass, a safe one. Really running at full throttle to stay where they are at 2 0 down without having anything left really to turn the shape of the game. It's Labrock. Negri hoping to get something from very close quarters there to complete his hat trick, but maybe it was in Labrock's mind to get the goal for himself. Yeah, I think Brian Labrock did try to score there, but the slight misjudgment. Usually it was himself who's pass across the face of the goal, but it, was, it ended up uh, being neither. It's a good show of defiance here from Frail, claiming that there was handball by Ferguson, not seen as that by the referee. Albets. Back goes Murray, who's not looked out of uh, his company here. No, he's defended stuffily through it, Tim Martin. Gone up, and it's going to be a change for Hearts. Jim Hamilton is coming off, and Stefan Adam, who played for the last couple of years for Mets, had a taste of European football last season. Looked initially though he was coming to Scotland and indeed to Edinburgh to play for Hibbs, who had a look at him, but in the end he signed a contract for Heart of Midlothian. to a really dangerous area and yeah. Hart's happy to escape with just a corner conceded. Absolutely, that was a magnificent play from Lourdes. Great change of pace, perfect delivery. And uh, Negri had just gone too far to the front and no one coming behind him. More, a very one-sided corner count. Again, emphasising the uh, territorial shape of the game. balance and the ball I'm getting no sympathy for that from the Rangers fans who see Loudrup take it on get the ball back from Cleland Negri wanted too much time he probably won't get a better chance than that no that was easier than the one they scored the second goal with uh... Loudrup's offside but Lovely interplay between Cleland and Laudrup. Yeah, absolutely. And it's 
seem as though Hearts had no answer here, but they were helped out by Marco Negri, who wanted an extra touch. Yeah, and Brian Lodrick, very unselfish again. He could easily have tried to score himself, but he was prepared to pass to the better-placed teammate. stage of the season are not at peak fitness and you often in the opening games get a little uh, tailing off of the uh, pace of proceedings Rangers happy to play the ball around at the back a moment or two ago but now they've got some proper defending to do against Cameron away with a certain amount of composure until Perini decided that uh, it was time to whack it Fulton. Yeah, he's got a good uh, left foot, Stephen Fulton, but I think he was uh, shooting rather rashly there. Maybe another yard or two forward before he let fire would have been better for him. Coming up for you on Sky Sports, starting on Sky Sports 3 on Sunday. Sheffield United against Sunderland. We start at midday. And later that afternoon, Tottenham Hotspur against Manchester United, and one would assume Teddy Sheringham. Super Sunday starts at three on Sky Sports 1. Negri, put through by Lama. It stays at 2-0. Yeah, magnificent pass through to Marco Negri there, and it was a great chance. The top honours tonight. Maybe Marco Negri's missed the boat with the, those couple of chances they've got away from him, but there's still time. And Jonas Turn still doing the prompting in yeah, a top-class right. manner. Absolutely. I think uh, Parini at the back and uh, Turn in midfield, Lauda up front, and Negri have all, have all played exceptionally well. shot from the uh, Alec Fellon. Well, it's a couple of years since we've seen a, a league goal from Cleland, but we were very close to it then. Yeah, first-class attempt. And here he is again. Hearts didn't really step out when they had the chance to do so. Far post towards Negri. And Russo got across to make the smothering save. Yeah, but what a precise cross yet again from Loudrop. He's putting it right on Negri's head. And forwards will always say, well, the worrying times are not when we're missing chances or not taking chances, when we're not getting positions to score. And Negri has got into goal-getting positions on countless occasions tonight. Yeah, by the law of averages, he should have scored more, but uh, if he keeps getting in these positions, uh, clearly he will score quite a number throughout the season. Turn there to help out Ferguson. And now having to hold up the hand of apology again. He's such a powerful figure, Perini. Had a couple of caps for Italy without ever establishing 
himself as a regular in the international setup. And the uh, hard count rises again, McCann. Craig Moore coming off and uh, on comes Gattuso. Reno, as they like to call him here, Gennaro Gattuso. A teenager, also from Perugia, like Negri. A competitive midfield player. Walter Smith said to me, he likes a tackle, to which my reply was, he's come to the right league. <laughs> ah, you're a bit harsh there. But you will see some football played in this league. And uh, some very good football. I think you're, you're seeing some excellent play from both it teams. It wasn't today. a reflection of a <laughs> lack of football, Craig, just that yeah. it's a very competitive league with the sides indeed. playing each other so often okay. and knowing so much about each other. <laughs> Says he trying to get himself out of trouble. <laughs> no, I've got to defend this league of ours here. Well, quite right, too. Hearts have had a long time defending in the match. Yeah, it's now when you see the effects of the rigours of uh, pre-season training. You know, the players in the last ten minutes or so have got to get through the pain barrier again. And I think uh, they're all doing very well. This is a big area in which to play, a big pitch. Pace has played it. The game has played at good pace. Oh, there's a So much work to do, Russo now. And this time with the right boot. Great pass from Gattuso there, the substitute player. Wonderful ball through to Loudrup. Turn. This is Gattuso. Had to be a well timed tackle by Fulton then. Had to get some of the ball. McCann having to hold it up under a little bit of pressure, and he was able to do that. So that's six yellow cards for Hearts now. Decent ball up to Adam. Alberts. Now but playing it straightforward and simple that time. And given the responsibility again by Ferguson. How do you assess this Rangers performance, Greg? Well, I think it's been an assured and a comfortable performance by Rangers, and I think the new players have settled in exceptionally well. Uh, they've all done well. Perini at the back, Stens has, has impressed me. The uh, left-sided uh, full-back there looks excellent. And, of course, Negri, two good goals. Well, one particularly good goal and one poaching one, but uh, the man for me has been turned in midfield. So when you remember that Gascoigne's not playing, and one or two others not playing, and one that will be telling me that he should be playing, I think he was hurt and might have been the bench as Ali McCoy, still capable of a goal or two. So Rangers have got great strength still. Look at that bench, there's Gordon Jury, still not being used, and a very capable striker. So. And another of the Italians, Emma Russo, of course, is uh, yeah, exactly. the reckoning at the moment as well. I think well, Gascoigne's the key to... If it stays like this, top of the table at the end of the first round of matches. And he's done it in a great style. 
Yeah, an excellent shot from Alec Cleland, and uh, Alec Cleland has played exceptionally well throughout. He's got into many attacking positions, and he's been unlucky with a previous shot, and he thoroughly deserved that to third goal for Rangers. Well, he was one of the most consistent players last season. When you look at the number of games played, he was always in there. Yeah, absolutely, he's a very modest guy and uh, not a flashy player at all, but a most consistent player, a thorough professional, and uh, I'm sure I saw the delight in the captain, Brian Loudrop, when he congratulated him there. Brian, pleased for Alec, as I'm sure are all the Rangers players. And the national team coach. Absolutely. Well, the third goal was on the cards. It seemed to be, uh, that's the question of whether Rousset could keep Rangers at bay. beaten even with the length of his reach on the side that the goalkeepers don't like to be beaten the near post side by Alec Clark. here's McCann's cross pointed and that was just a, a drill hopeful ball upfield by Murray but it flew here, Frail and Gattuso. Uncharacteristically so, and uh, Cameron finished that exceptionally well. Well, how Jim Jeffries would feel that had that goal happened when they were just 2 0 down. Yeah. Yeah, if he'd got it back to 2 1, it might have been a different finish, but uh, Rangers are still in a comfortable position. They've kept their shape, and I'm sure Jim Jeffries can't fault them for effort. But uh, the superior individual players that Rangers have managed to uh, get a victory for Rangers. Perini's pass. Cleland's got the taste. given Hearts an extra sense of zest here and here's Adam taking the shot early Craig time for your verdict as the who is the man of the match today. well I've been dropping hints and I think uh, although David Weir has played very well for Hearts and couldn't be faulted I think you've got to say that uh, Jonas Tern has been outstanding and he's my man of the match uh, Martin Ensures that Rangers keep possession there.
only had a handful of senior appearances with Perugia. But he came in the Marco Negri deal. Yeah, a popular wee player, but we call him not unlike uh, in appearance uh, a young Maradona. If he turns out to be half as good, the Rangers fans will be delighted. A tenth as good would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although there are rumours of yet another Maradona comeback, and who was it, Manotti, the uh, yeah. coach of Argentina when they won the World Cup in 78, saying that Maradona could be the player of the finals in 1998. How about that? So looking for an explanation whether he'd understand it, of course, is another matter. I doubt it. I don't think Stuart will be speaking in Italian. that on goal scored has taken them to the top of Scotland's Premier Division. Two for Marco Negri, one for um, Alec Cleland. And uh, Cleland's goal making it 3-0 and a moment to savour for him. But Hearts who toiled and uh, were certainly second best in terms of the possession and many of the features in the game but got one back through Colin Cameron they will feel that the decision on the first goal decided the outcome tonight whether the ball was over the line or not the officials said yes and that's what matters and then Negri came up 70 seconds later with that superb chip and Rangers were certain winners from that moment on final score at Ibrox tonight Rangers three hearts one Thanks to Martin Tyler and Craig Brown. Do stay with us. The Sports Centre from 10 o'clock, all today's sports news. Superbike World Championship highlights of round seven at 10.30 uh, on Sky Sports 1. And on Sky Sports 3 now, the Anderson Consulting World Championship of Golf. When we come back, we'll hear from Charlie Nicholas. Manchester United return to action on Sunday, our first game of the new Premiership season in England. Live from White Hart Lane, it's Spurs against Manchester United, Sunday at 3, Sky Sports 1. At Ibrox, it's finished, and it was very comfortable for the Champions Rangers. They beat Hearts by three goals to one. They outshot them 21 to five. Ten shots on target for Rangers to only three for Hearts, and Rangers forced 12 corners, only one for the visitors. Hard fought throughout, Hearts didn't give up the ghost by any means, and Hearts with a total of six men bulk, Point and Salvatore, Frail, Rousset, Weir and McCann, but unlike this game last season, nobody sent off, so that's one plus for them. Rangers dominating territory in the first half, and a very similar story in the second period in terms of where the uh, play was concentrated, Rangers with vast dominance of the ball as well. Man of the match, one of the new arrivals, Jonas Turn with Davy Proven. Well, Jonas, the ideal start to Rangers League campaign tonight. Did, that, did it turn out to be a more comfortable night's work than you expected? No, I think it was um, very hard work. And uh, Hearts did a good game. 
was closing very well in the first half, but we, we got lucky and scored the two goals in the first half. And then it's always easier in the second half when I had to, to come, uh, uh, come forward more. What are your early impressions of the players round about you? Uh, very good players, and I think uh, I didn't expect the pace to be so high because uh, I played several years in Italy and uh, I have many good players there, but the pace here is much, much higher than, than in Italy. A midfielder needs runners round about him. Were you pleased with the movement you got from the lads in front of you? Yeah, very good. It's two very good players, Marco and, and Brian, to play with them. So uh, I think uh, the whole midfield today did a very good, good job and uh, it's important to, to have 11 good players. And it's another step towards match fitness tonight with the, the Gothenburg game coming up. Is there still a bit of fitness to be found? I think the fitness we have, but uh, it's, it's every, every game has its uh, own history, you know, so it's going to be a completely different game on next Wednesday, so I hope that we can do a good performance even another time so that we can win that game away. OK, Jonas, you're the Bells man of the match tonight, and here's the champagne that goes with it. Well done. Looks like a ready-made top professional, doesn't he, Jonas Turn? Charlie, it's great to have the money, but somebody's got to do good homework to find the right players. Yep. Do you feel Rangers have done that part of it? I do. I, I feel like uh, Kenny Glaish did at Blackburn. There's a similarity here. I think you're, he's bought quality, and no doubt about that. There's severe quality there. And Rangers' second half tonight, it was like strolling apart from him. Very impressive. Didn't look like becoming a landslide early on, did it? First half, I didn't think so, and I think, unfortunately, when that first goal, which I still don't think is a goal... <laughs> we'll see it again in I a mean, moment. this is good individual play from Negro, who... Once I think he actually got this shot and turn in, started to believe in himself a little bit more. And he started to look as if he thrived on the... You know, he's playing up front of his own. But from that, Loudrop, this is a great save from Rusi onto the post. But other than Loudrop before then, they didn't look at, at you know, somebody was going to have the killer touch for them. Term was impressive, Sten Sass and Perini. Very impressive, but uh, once they got going, they, they did start looking a, a good side and they had a big confidence from this. This is a fumble from Rousset. For me, when he, when he actually touches the ball, Rousset, for me, it's not over the line. In fairness to Craig Brown, he's, I think he's made a great point when we talked about it at halftime with Martin yeah. Tyler. You know, the video evidence looks like it won't be conclusive in a situation like that. No, it won't be. When you make mistakes like that as a goalkeeper, you deserve to be punished. But then you've got to stick up for Rousset. Look where his hands are. Look, the hands for me are on just behind the line, and that's enough not to convince anybody. But it's a difficult decision. There's no doubt about this. Will you give him this one? I would give him this. I would give anybody this, and I would say he should have just walked straight up the tunnel after this because yeah. this was so classy. That's fantastic. A tremendous, absolutely sensational finish. There was only one thing in his mind. He's got his head down for technique. He knows if he judges it right. He's, all, he's already off and running and celebrating. Clips the bar. Well, they've contained them pretty well to this point, Hearts, Charlie, but do you feel for them going two goals behind so quickly? Yeah, so quickly, and he was the difference with that uh, special goal, but from then, Ranger started passing. Loudrop, this was another great effort off the bar. I mean, sensational. He's only in the box on his own, but he manages to get that. Lovely way to pass, but watch the technique. He actually means he's controlling this, fighting off over Rousse. Keep a, he's no chance, and he's, he's fortunate it comes back off the bar. Charlie, no disrespect at all to Hearts, who stuck to their task so gay in the second half, but this looked like shooting practice second half. Well, and this is the side that finished fourth in the table last season. Well, listen, this, this team is, is not a bad side. Hearts are a good side, and they're going to improve after another four or five games. They'll improve, and they'll be up the top half of the table. The Rangers tonight, they look very efficient in everything they did. Even Loudrop here, another opportunity. Credit to Rusi and Richie combination. The Rangers made so many chances and so many openings tonight. And then Cleland, you know, for me this has booked his, his place in the next squad. The international squad now beckons for him with this performance tonight. Every goal is vital at uh, international level, certainly, and Craig Brown may wish for one of these in the next few months. Well, he he's gave us his compliments, his compliments to Cleland tonight, and I, I would be surprised if he doesn't get included in that first squad. But he never gave up parts to the credit. Cameron does the right thing, gets across the defender, and gets a good goal for Hart, so they never gave up, but it was a tall order for them ever to get involved in this game. To ever get anything out of it was probably just a dream and nothing much, much more. So Walter Smith has exactly what he would have wished for from this player's Tremendous first start. From, tremendous start, first half, not great production at the end of it, not finishing, but once Negri got his second goal, Rangers were class. Let's hear from the Rangers boss, Walter Smith, OBE now, with Davy Proven.
Well, Walter, it's always easy to, to fall on your face on the, the opening day of the season. Were you quite happy with what you saw out there tonight? Yes, considering uh, you know the build-up we've had, bringing in a lot of new players, I think we've got to be happy with the way that we played. There are obviously one or two things that uh, we'll have to brush up on, but uh, we needed the game badly. I think that showed, especially the second half of the match, uh, we needed that type of game to get us up and started. The Honest Turn won the Man of the Match award, but I'm sure the Rangers supporters were impressed tonight by Marco Negri. What did you make of his performance? Well, he's shown in the games that we've had so far that uh, he's a good finisher. And I think he showed that tonight. He uh, was on hand when Giorgio fumbled the first one. Uh, second one was a terrific finish in, in MDC. He had a, one off the bar at the end. A couple of other chances that were maybe easier than it, the goal he scored. So I think for you know the first time, uh, what real competitive game that we've had this season, um, I was very pleased with him. Nevertheless, you did come down to the dugout a couple of times in the second half. Was there anything that was uh, displeasing you at that stage? No, not particularly. Craig Moore and uh, Sergio Perini both had injuries, which was stretched just now because we've got a lot of injuries to defenders right at the present moment. So we were just a little bit concerned that uh, they were worsening. Craig Moore had to come off. We had to change our way of playing then. And I think you know that was part and parcel of losing the goal near the end. One of those injuries that you refer to is uh, to Lorenzo Amoruso. Does he have any chance of making the game against Gothenburg? He doesn't have any chance of making the first match, but we're hopeful that he will make uh, the second return leg um, here at Ibrox. OK, Walter, thanks for your time. Well done tonight. Thanks, David. So one half of the old firm delighted with their start in the league. Our live action this season started yesterday in Scotland. We were at Easter Road, Hibernian starting against Celtic. Craig Brown in the commentary box, joined by Rob Hawthorne. Excellent play by Rugier. Oh, great cross of the goal! Lee Power scores for Hibernian. Good opportunity this for Celtic to draw level. Oh, what a header from Mackay! Yes, an excellent header from Malcolm Mackay. Henrik Larson. Oh, give it away. It's Chick Chan Lee. What a hit! What a fantastic goal! Charlie Hibbs hero then, they struggled so badly last season. But Charlie, what about Celtic's problems compared to Rangers after we've seen them both? Well, I think the balance of teamwork, you know, Rangers already look evidence in that. There is still a lot of new players to gel. Celtic have got the same problem and going to find, I think, more players coming in. But they didn't look at, like a team unit. They didn't look to have a, a good balance to me. And Hibbs deserved the victory. Thank you, Charlie. It's looking like hard work for Celtic in the months to come. Uh, just before we leave you to remind you about the uh, rest of the evening here, Sky Sports Centre with all the moves on the eve of the season coming next. Tartan Extra, the new series starts Tuesday 6.30, Sky Sports 1. Lots of live football to come. Football League action from Bramall Lane, Sheffield United, Sunderland, Sunday at 12, Sky Sports 3. Sky Sports 1 on Sunday at 3, Spurs against Manchester United in the FA Carling Premiership. The Monday night football is... Highbury, Arsenal against Coventry, 7 o'clock, Sky Sports 1 next Monday evening. And Cup action on Tuesday next, 7.30, Sky Sports 3, first round of the Coca-Cola Cup in England. Two quality sides as well meeting there, Queen's Park Rangers against Wolverhampton Wanderers. So we're off and running. My thanks to Charlie Nicholas. Pleasure. The uh, early signs in Scotland are excellent for Rangers and not very good for Celtic. Rangers are top in Scotland. Who's to say come May they won't still be there? Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now.